Hi, it's DeWire. It's Sunday, <clears throat> July 25th, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Digitalassetlife.com, a free site. For podcasts, DeWireBoxingNews.com. Now, let's talk about what I believe is a compelling investment opportunity that I'm going to pursue, or rather, that I'm pursuing. Nothing I say in this video should be construed as financial advice. I want each of you to follow your own judgment and to listen to your own investment advisors. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, YouTube tells me that most of the people who listen to me are under 35 years old. I thank you for giving this channel a look. But I want you to look at the older people around you. Right? We'll try to make this lighthearted. But understand, there is a tone of seriousness also. Right? Look at the older people around you, the people, let's say, 55 and older. Right? Uncle Lamont, Auntie Keisha, <clears throat> the people who were alive in the late 70s and early 80s, the people who may have invested back then, right? The thing with older people is you'll see a couple and they are, let's say, in their late 60s. Maybe you see them at the senior center uh, when you're dropping off your parents, maybe you see them at the movie theater, walking around the mall to get exercise, etc. And when you're that age, people don't really talk about the decisions they made when they were younger that got them some financial security in their retirement years. Right? Well, <clears throat> let's turn the clock back to 1981. You remember the era. If you were in New York City, you remember Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. Maybe you remember the Crash Crew or the Treacherous Three, right? Or maybe your musical tastes were a little bit different. Maybe they leaned toward Blondie, the Cars, the Police. You remember the era very different era than now. Let's talk about how different. In 1981, and I encourage people to Google this information, right? It's a different time. Folks are older. They don't talk about it that much. But in 1981, the yield on the 30-year treasury, in other words, you're lending money to a financially solvent debtor, the United States government. In 1981, the yield on the 30-year treasury got as high as 15.21%. Let me repeat that, 15.21%. We're talking about a 30-year treasury. In other words, many people from that era, many, got 15%, maybe a little bit less, 14% on their 30 year from 1981 to 2011. Folks, you're lucky if you have equities, if you have stocks earning 10% on average per year. Here, the government was giving you a bond and promising to pay you, and did pay you, more than 15% a year for 30 years, right? Understand, the 1980s, and this is before the boom, in the latter part of the decade, the 1980s can be characterized as huge bond yields that gradually decreased over the remainder of the decade. Now, to put this in perspective, today, 
the yield on the 30 year is 1.9%. Just do the math. 1.9%, you're struggling. 15.21%, not so much. Well, folks, happy days are here again. But I need for you to understand the risk involved. Your debtor is not the United States government. As in the early 80s, we're in economically uncertain times. Right? The big difference here is you have financial repression. You have a Federal Reserve that is determined to keep interest rates down. You no longer have a government that only has a debt equal to about 30% of its annual GDP. Now our debt here in the United States exceeds our yearly GDP. Right? But what I want people to do is to realize that in the world of cryptocurrency, what people are calling DeFi right now, there are opportunities involving very high profile coins. Right? I'm going to talk about a coin here that's in the top five of all of cryptocurrency in terms of market cap. A coin that's deflationary, not inflationary. Folks, they're burning the coin. A coin that is the linchpin, quite frankly, of an ecosystem that developed and has blossomed because of the shortcomings of the Ethereum ecosystem. Right? Ethereum reached a point where the limited throughput and the high transaction fees started to kill the ecosystem, right? It was so bad that Ethereum has announced that they're coming out with Ethereum 2.0 and they're gonna move from proof of work to proof of stake and they're gonna change the way in which transactions are processed so now your transaction is supposed to cost less to process well, understand, while Ethereum was figuring all of that out, one of the biggest exchange systems in the world, Binance, came up with something called the Binance Smart Chain to compete against the Ethereum blockchain. Right? And Binance has created a parallel universe that's more efficient. More importantly, it's generating a lot of business. Understand, the Binance Smart Chain right now is one of the most heavily used blockchains in the world. Right? Look at the transactions on the Binance Smart Chain over the last three months. Now, not surprisingly, in the Binance ecosystem, one of the key coins is BNB, the Binance coin, right? It is in the top five of market caps in the entire metaverse, right? To do certain things on the Binance ecosystem, you need the Binance coin. Right? This is the coin that you could use to trade against many other coins in the Binance ecosystem. Let's also talk about how big the presence of Binance is. Here in the United States, Binance has a U.S. site that's small compared to Binance.com. That site is Binance.us. And folks, it's one of the best sites I know of. You can do ACH transactions and a bunch of other things on that site, right? Well, your portal to the Binance ecosystem, quite frankly, the one I use is Trust Wallet. 
It's available on Google Play Store. Now what you'll find with Trust Wallet is that Trust Wallet has certain capabilities that you can do right from the wallet itself. Not only that, here online, you have a lot of people discussing Trust Wallet transactions on this forum, on YouTube. You also have a lot of explanatory articles on how to do certain things on Trust Wallet that have been written in some of cryptocurrencies more advanced uh, website services. Well, what I want people to consider right now is that BNB coin is available on numerous sites, but on Trust Wallet, you can stake BNB coin. Again, a coin with a top five market cap in all of crypto. You can stake it and they will pay you for a coin that, quite frankly, if they paid you no interest, you would be, in my opinion, the owner of a coin with some of the greatest upside in all of crypto. In other words, the capital gains, I believe, are going to be huge. The capital gains have been huge in the past. Right, The coin right now is going off at a little bit more than $300 a coin. This is the digital world. right? You can buy a fraction of the coin. right? You don't have to pay $300 for the coin. But just understand, I want you to look at the price chart on the coin. You're going to find out that the coin has been as much as more than $100 more than the current price. Right, we're coming off a bit of a crypto winter where much of the metaverse has been negatively impacted price wise. Right, Bitcoin recently got down below $30,000 a coin. Now it's bouncing back. As I make this video, it's around $34,000 a coin. Right, BNB coin has bounced back in step with Bitcoin. But what I want you to understand is this coin is uniquely situated in the exploding Binance ecosystem, right? Understand, in the world of Ethereum, you have Uniswap, you have SushiSwap. In the Binance ecosystem, you have PancakeSwap, right? Binance has many launch pads, many accelerators, right? Binance, of course, has the big brand name. Well, if you stake BNB on Trust Wallet today, folks, I can tell you that some of the providers, right? You have a choice of stake pool. Let's just name one. TW Staking will pay you not the 15.21% that you got on the 30-year treasury in 1981. Now, they'll pay you 16.2%. 16.2%. And let's go one step further. The currency used in 1981 to repay the bond was the dollar. Right? Uh currency that's been losing value since Nixon took us off the gold standard. Understand that BNB coin, a deflationary coin, that Binance burns in accordance with its profits, may well, and I say may, it's speculative. Understand, this video is for speculators, not investors. BNB coin might well appreciate in value versus the dollar. It might well appreciate in value versus the dollar's past performance in addition to its future performance. Right? As I've said, I've owned BNB for a while. 
I owned it to get capital gains. I owned it because of its scarcity. Now on top of having a coin with huge capital gain potential, right? And for the tax savvy, understand, if you have a coin that's appreciating in value, as long as you don't sell it, there's no taxable event. Well, on top of that, if you stake BNB, they'll give you 16.2% denominated in BNB, right? Not in depreciating dollars, but in potentially appreciating BNB, right? There are other great opportunities out in the cryptoverse, right? Right now, Celsius is giving you 6.2% on the first Bitcoin that you deposit with that, right? I know many people want a dollar cost average into Bitcoin. You can just place a Bitcoin with Celsius or up to a Bitcoin with Celsius. Again, it's digital. So if you have $5,000 worth of Bitcoin, okay, great. That's less than one full Bitcoin. You can deposit it with Celsius and get 6.2% paid back in Bitcoin. So just the act of depositing assures that you're buying Bitcoin on a monthly basis, or at least you're getting Bitcoin on a monthly basis as a rate of return. But understand, 6.2% pales in comparison to 16.2%, right? The 6.2% is missing 10% upside that you could get with BNB coin. Now, don't get me wrong. I believe Bitcoin is the best play in the metaverse. I think there's Bitcoin and then there's everything else. But if you're a speculator, you have to know about these outsized returns and this huge profit potential. Let me also say too, that I understand some regulators are upset with Binance because this is a decentralized world. Right? Binance is more centralized than most of the decentralized world, but they're still decentralized compared to legacy finance. So, as you can imagine, regulators are a bit upset because Binance doesn't have a set office. Right? The contracts we're talking about, staking contracts, they're smart contracts, they're digital contracts built into the coins. Right? And so you can imagine, legacy finance regulators are upset. Folks, those problems will be solved. Because quite frankly, the increased efficiency that can be passed on to the creditors of the system, that's really who you are if you're what we call staking coins with the system. You're allowing them to use your money Right? The difference is, rather than have a bunch of bankers on the other side of the transaction, what you have is computer code. What you have are mathematical computations. Right? Let me also say this too, and I don't say it lightly. When you stake coins on Binance, unlike Celsius, where... I literally had to send Celsius Bitcoin, right, in order to earn my 6.2%. When you stake by contrast with Binance, you keep your coins. You can't use them while they're staked. That's the nature of the smart contract. Right? The party receiving the staking is able to use the coins for liquidity purposes. 
But understand, you could always terminate the staking. You always have access to your coins. The party receiving the staked coins, right? It's really a liquidity reserve. The party receiving the staked coins doesn't get your private keys. You still have complete control over your coins. If you decide you want to end the staking, you can do so. In other words, you're protected more than you are in the legacy finance world where you make a loan, the money leaves your account. Some debtor someplace has the money. And if you're unfortunate, you might end up in bankruptcy court where the judge might tell you that the debt was unsecured and you have little resource, uh, recourse. Right, so give it a look this is one of the most mind-blowing developments in the metaverse. This, quite frankly, as well as other deals. In another video, we'll talk about farming, right? But let's just say DeFi right now is passing the profits onto market participants. And what we're finding out is that when these providers don't have to pay for, let's say, financial district real estate in some expensive downtown area, when their overhead doesn't include paying a lot of workers and buying a lot of furniture, when the lender can literally reduce transactions to computer code over collateralization, Right, staking, where you keep your private keys and can end the relationship at any time, they can actually pay you more. So, to Grandfather Bob, to Uncle Lamont, to Auntie Keisha, sit down with them. Say to them, tell me about the early 1980s. Tell me about Paul Volcker saving the financial system of the United States. Tell me about the interest rates you received on U.S. bonds as well as the mortgage rates you were paying on the home you owned at that time if you took out a mortgage in the early 1980s. You're going to hear some amazing stories. Just understand, as Grandfather Bob tells you about the 14-15% he got on a 30-year or a 10-year, you can privately look at him, allow him to tell his story, nod your head, and understand that you can even get a better rate than that right now by staking BNB coin on trust wallet right do the research don't take chances get comfortable with the data go to trust wallet you can download the wallet and just see the features it has right you don't even have to put money in the wallet until you feel comfortable figure out pancake swap see the capabilities right out the wallet you can engage in liquidity pools Right, where you help these exchanges get liquidity in exchange for part ownership of the profits. Folks, it's a whole new world out there. And let's just say it has the potential to be incredibly lucrative. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. If you've had experiences, positive or negative, with staking cryptocurrency, if you're a trust wallet user and you want to share stories with us, I hope you do that. 